We all know being an Avenger isn't an easy job, but wow, do they have a high turnover rate. Apparently being an Avenger isn't all about hanging out with super soldiers and eating shawarma. Who knew? After Avengers Endgame, the big screen roster is looking a bit worse for wear. Much to our chagrin, Marvel Studios likes to play coy for the most part, but they've dropped some significant hints about heroes we could see showing up in Phase 4, including the X-Men and the Fantastic Four. But we're sure you already knew that, right? Other lesser-known characters also deserve some time in the spotlight too, don't you think? So let's take a look at some other characters who may be very close to making their MCU debut. Everyone knows about the aquatic-themed DC superhero Aquaman. Jason Momoa played him in the most successful DC movie so far, which we know isn't saying all that much, but although DC got their underwater hero to the big screen first, Marvel's character Namor the Submariner was actually created years before Aquaman. He's the son of a human fisherman and an Atlantean princess. And let's just say he doesn't always play well with others. There are some fans who think his arrival in Phase 4 was foreshadowed in Avengers Endgame when Okoye announced an underwater earthquake occurred off the coast of Wakanda. Speaking of not playing well with others, Namor has some issues with Wakanda in the comic books, like the time he flooded the whole place when he was in one of his moods. You see, Namor isn't your typical hero, and frankly, a lot of the time, he goes right past the anti-hero line and becomes a straight-up villain. But you have to admit he's complex, and we all know Marvel fans prefer their characters to be more than just one-dimensional. While he hasn't made his big-screen debut yet, he has joined the roster of the mobile game Marvel Contest of Champions. If you don't read the comic books, you might not find the prospect of She-Hulk to be particularly exciting. But don't let the name fool you. Jennifer Walters is way more than a version of the Hulk that just so happens to have lady parts. In addition to being a superhero, she's also a lawyer, and we're not talking about the shady Better Call Saul kind. She fights for the rights of the downtrodden with her cleverness and wit, when she isn't fighting for them with her big green fists. Originally, She-Hulk was portrayed as violent and out of control, much like the Incredible Hulk, but she later became a more cheerful, kind, but still feisty heroine. She can make quips like Spider-Man, but punch with the strength of the Hulk, and that's something we'd love to see in the MCU. Like the existing Hulk, the distribution rights for her character currently belong to Universal. Yes, that's the real reason there hasn't been another standalone Hulk movie. It's not just because the first one wasn't very good, but it's possible she could join up with the other heroes in their franchises, just like we've seen her cousin Bruce Banner do. Nova is one of those great Marvel comic book characters we're kinda surprised hasn't been featured yet. After all, he was created when the last remaining Nova Corps soldier, Roman Day, gifted his powers to unassuming high school student Richard Ryder, and as we all know, Thanos announced he destroyed the Nova Corps off-screen in Infinity War, which of course got us suspicious. Would Marvel Studios really deny us that undoubtedly epic space battle, unless they were gonna show it later? Apparently, in earlier drafts of Guardians of the Galaxy, Nova was going to be included, but ultimately didn't make the cut. Because of his connection to outer space and the franchise, it seems likely we'll see him sooner rather than later. Marvel Studios head Kevin Feige said that, in a sea of superheroes, Nova has immediate potential, which is about 80% less vague than most of his statements about the future of the MCU. We think that bodes well for us seeing Nova show up at some point in Phase 4 of Marvel movies, potentially even in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, especially considering that's something we've been waiting forever to see too. Everyone knows that many characters from the Thor franchise are based on North mythology, including Loki, Odin, and Thor himself. But there are many other mythical characters in the comic books, including Hercules, who's based on the Greek character Heracles. For a long time, many fans felt Thor and company satisfied the mythological requirements of the MCU, but now Odin is gone, Loki is at best on another timeline, and Thor is who knows where. At different times, Thor and Hercules have been friends and rivals in the comic books, so it'd be interesting to see what their movie counterparts are like. As we get ready to head into Phase 4 of Marvel movies, Marvel Studios has promised us even greater diversity this time around. Director Joe Russo played the first openly gay character in the MCU in Endgame, and Marvel claims there will be another in Phase 4. In the comic books, Hercules has been portrayed as bisexual, and it's possible he could be on the big screen as well. Some even wonder if he'll show up during the Eternals movie that's being worked on. It's also been reported that Marvel Studios is working to hire its first openly gay actor for the Eternals, so this could be another hint that Hercules might be showing up soon. Sentry was supposed to capture the aesthetic of a character straight from the golden age of superheroes, and even his name fits the bill. Robert Reynolds may not be related to Deadpool actor Ryan Reynolds, but he's a pretty awesome character nonetheless. Like many of our favorite Marvel heroes, he doesn't exactly embody what it means to be a hero, at least on the surface. 
He's an overweight guy with addiction issues, but hey, at least he really loves his dog. That's something we can all relate to. Sentry is one of the most powerful characters around, and his abilities are near limitless. But he also has a darker side called the Void, who's about as bright and cheery as he sounds. It's the kind of craziness we'd love to see incorporated into the MCU, but we've been burned before. There's been long talk of a Sentry movie, but it's always been extremely vague. Back in 2016, actor Justin Cousselain posed with several Sentry comics and added an infuriatingly intriguing winking emoji. Frankly, misuse of a winky face should be a misdemeanor, because sadly, we've seen no trace of an actual Sentry movie yet, but that doesn't mean we're not desperately hoping it'll happen in Phase 4. If you think we're crazy to hold out hope for a Sentry movie, just consider that. Not too long ago, it seemed totally impossible to ever see Spider-Man in the MCU. The rights to Spider-Man were controlled by Sony, who understandably didn't want to share. But when they had to make another Spider-Man movie or lose the rights, they struck up a deal with Marvel Studios and that's how we finally got to see Peter Parker swinging through the streets of New York City in the MCU. But you can call us greedy because now that we have one spider citizen, we want another, namely Spider-Woman Jessica Drew. She was saved from uranium poisoning with experimental infusions of spider blood, which is something we definitely don't recommend trying at home. Although we didn't see her in the first Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, she'll allegedly appear in the Sony sequel. This might hurt her chances of making it to the MCU, but then again, Peter Parker also appeared in the first movie. Not just one Peter Parker either, there were multiple Peters! With the Marvel Multiverse now a thing, it seems possible we could get to see Jessica Drew at some point. When it comes to the Spider characters we want to see in the MCU, Miles Morales is pretty high on our list. And to make the prospect even more exciting, it's clear he does exist in the MCU. But we just haven't seen this version of him on the big screen yet. In the movie Spider-Man Homecoming, we saw Peter Parker track down a man named Aaron Davis, played by community actor and Spider-Man fan Donald Glover. Aaron is reluctant to cooperate with Spider-Man's weapons investigation at first, but he relents because he cares about the safety of his nephew who lives in the neighborhood. We all know Aaron Davis is the uncle of none other than Miles Morales, and in a deleted scene, we even heard Aaron talking on the phone with someone named Miles. Miles Morales exists in a universe where Peter Parker tragically passed away, and Miles is consumed with guilt over not being able to save him. So he takes on the mantle of Spider-Man and dedicates his life to fighting crime. We don't think you can ever have too many arachnid-based superheroes, so we'd definitely like to see Miles swing into the MCU officially. Okay, okay, so we know that Adam Warlock was revealed in the mid credit scene of Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2, but come on, did that really count? Originally, he was going to be an integral part of the movie instead of just making a cameo at the end. He's one of James Gunn's favorite characters, and both he and Kevin Feige said he'll have an integral role in the future of the MCU. In fact, the writers of Infinity War tossed around the idea of involving Adam Warlock in the movie. After all, he's a major player in the Infinity Gauntlet storyline, upon which the movie is loosely based, but screenwriters Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely decided that Adam Warlock is simply too awesome to get crammed into such a busy movie with so many other characters. He was literally created to be the perfect person, so it's not that surprising that the standards of introducing him are set sky high. Marcus and McFeely seem to think Adam Warlock deserves his own movie. And after making us wait so long, we might just agree with that. But who are we kidding? We'd be just as ecstatic if he appeared in Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3. Since James Gunn is back directing the franchise, we think it's even more likely he'll show up sometime very soon. Adam Warlock may be James Gunn's favorite Marvel comic book character, but he's far from the only one he claims to be a fan of. According to James Gunn, he would love to work on a project involving Moon Knight, and it's possible his introduction to the MCU has already been teased. In Captain America The Winter Soldier, we heard Agent Jasper Sitwell talk about threats facing Hydra, including Bruce Banner and Stephen Strange. But then he talks about a news anchor living in Cairo, Egypt, a description that doesn't match any current MCU characters. In Civil War, Secretary Ross displays maps of global incidents, including one that looks like it involves Egypt. What's so significant about the location? Well, in the comic books, that's where Mark Spector gains the powers which transforms him into Moon Knight. These seemingly minor movie events could turn out to be some heavy foreshadowing. James Gunn is far from the only person eager to bring Moon Knight to the MCU. Screenwriters Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely wrote The Winter Soldier and Civil War, among other Marvel movies. And Marcus claims he can't wait to write something about Moon Knight. It's possible he put some clues in his prior movies to make the introduction of Mark Spector totally seamless. We know it's hard to remember a time when superhero movies weren't absolutely dominating the box office, but we promise it used to be the case. All the way back in 1998, the movie Blade starring Wesley Snipes hit theaters. Although it wasn't a massive billion-dollar success like some of the current Marvel movies, it had no shortage of fans. 
It was a dark superhero movie based on a Marvel character that spawned two sequels. But when Marvel Studios kicked off the MCU with Iron Man in 2008, it seemed like they had forgotten about old Blade. While Marvel Studios chose to go in a different direction, we didn't forget about Blade. In fact, actor Wesley Snipes has even made some statements which makes it sound like the character is being incorporated into the MCU is a real possibility. We think it's about time since there have been a severe lack of vampires and vampiric creatures in the MCU for quite some time now. No clones, no zombies, no vampires. What kind of universe is this? At least we finally got the multiverse, which could manage to connect Blade to the current MCU timeline. When Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely were working on Infinity War, they considered debuting not just Adam Warlock but another popular comic book character. They momentarily thought of incorporating the Silver Surfer, but that was a total non-starter at the time. The character is associated with the Fantastic Four, which means the rights to him were held by Fox until Disney acquired them. Now they can safely introduce the Silver Surfer into the MCU and we just can't wait. Norrin Rad is a great character, well, who's pretty darn rad? He was created by comic book legends Jack Kirby and Stan Lee, and we've seen him on the big screen before. There's the movie Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer, but many fans feel the movie didn't quite do the character justice. In fact, the whole Fantastic Four crew really deserves better than they've gotten when it comes to their movies. There have been rumors of a Silver Surfer origin movie, which would be a great way to set the stage for other characters like the Fantastic Four and Galactus, who could come along later. Thanks to Disney acquiring Fox, there are tons of new characters fans are eager to see in the MCU, and the Silver Surfer could be a great first addition to the MCU. Unsurprisingly, Marvel Studios has been quiet on what movies we can expect to see in Phase 4, but they've given us some things to look forward to, including promises of incorporating greater diversity into the MCU. We know they've announced a movie about martial arts master Shang-Chi, and hopefully that's just the beginning. Considering the fact that Captain Marvel was such a huge hit at the box office and brought in over a billion dollars, we wouldn't be surprised to see some more great female superheroes. Of course, you know Carol Danvers goes by the name Captain Marvel, although nobody called her that until Spider-Man Far From Home. Well, in the comic books, Pakistani-American Kamala Khan is a massive Carol Danvers fan and eventually becomes a superhero herself. As a tribute to her idol, she goes by the name Miss Marvel and uses her polymorph abilities to save the day. When we were first introduced to Kamala in the comics, she's 16 years old, and we all know Marvel Studios has been talking about making a movie based on the Young Avengers. Of course, we don't expect it to be exactly the same as it was in the comic books, just like the founders of the Avengers weren't the same in the MCU as in the comics. Kamala could be an awesome new addition to the MCU and possibly the Young Avengers. In Guardians of the Galaxy, we were introduced to Drax the Destroyer, who lost his wife and daughter at the hands of Ronan the Accuser. Naturally, this leaves him swearing vengeance and occasionally acting rashly as a result. But in the comic books, Drax was once a normal guy named Arthur Douglas, who had the misfortune of catching a glimpse of the Mad Titan Thanos. Thanos blew up his car, which caused the demise of Arthur and his wife, but their daughter Heather survived. Arthur was reformed into Drax the Destroyer, a being whose sole purpose was to destroy Thanos. Heather, meanwhile, was taken in by Thanos' father, Mentor, who brought her to Titan to be raised by Shaolorn monks. While there, Heather was able to develop psychic powers, which had previously remained dormant, but as you might imagine, things on Titan were far from perfect, and an entity called the Dragon of the Moon possessed Heather, inspiring her to rename herself Moon Dragon. After Thanos wrecks havoc on Titan in typical Thanos fashion, Moon Dragon travels to Earth where she encounters the Avengers, among other heroes. We haven't had the chance to see Beta Ray Bill on the big screen yet, but we came kinda close in the movie Thor Ragnarok. You might have spotted a familiar looking statue on Sakaar, featuring the victor of the Contest of Champions. Beta Ray Bill actually came pretty close to making his debut in this movie, but sadly it wasn't meant to be. According to Kevin Feige, there simply wasn't enough time to introduce the character in a way which would have done him justice. But don't let that discourage you because he says it's only a matter of time before Beta Ray Bill shows up in the MCU when his character can be explored more. In the MCU, we saw Surtur lay waste to Asgard, causing Ragnarok, which, hey, is the name of the movie. In the comic book, Surtur destroys the homeworld of the Corbinites, who create a genetically engineered being to protect them. This being is Beta Ray Bill, and not only did he once wield Mjolnir, he beat Thor with it. This inspired Odin to forge Beta Ray Bill his own special Uru weapon called Stormbreaker. Yes, just like the weapon we saw Thor wield in Infinity War. See, we do know what we're talking about. Of course everyone knows about Captain America, but did you know there's also a Captain Britain? The character Brian Braddock was originally created in order to appeal to British audiences, but comic book readers all over the world soon became fans. In fact, fans have been pretty vocal about wanting Captain Britain to be incorporated into the MCU for quite some time. 
and there was even some hope he'd show up at some point in Avengers Endgame. Actor Simon Pegg said he loved the opportunity to portray the character. His story heavily involves the multiverse, which is now a thing in the MCU. Every version of Earth has a version of Captain Britain, and together, they form the Captain Britain Corps. Brian Braddock is the guy in charge of Earth-616, or Earth Prime, what most of us think as the main Marvel timeline. Considering all the craziness that went down in Avengers Endgame, it certainly seems like the multiverse could use someone looking out for it. Now that we're done talking about some awesome heroes we'd love to see in Phase 4, there are plenty more out there. Which Marvel characters do you want to see on the big screen? Tell us your picks in the comments section and then click on the subscribe button for more videos from us here at CBR. Bye for now!